Hi there. Uh, here is a question from Kaplan Medicals. And the question is about uh, a one-year-old boy who is suffering from uh, severe hypertonia. So, and the mother is complaining that she is having difficulty in feeding this baby. And that is because of progressive dyspnea and the fatigue that the baby is showing. And also baby's liver is, uh, it is relatively enlarged where the liver edge is about uh, 5 cm below the costal margin and also rails are heard on auscultation over both the lower lung fields and the chest x-ray shows cardiomegaly. So these are the signs that are given in the case time. So one is hypotonia so which is really uh, showing that the muscle uh, hypotonia in the muscle so weakness in the muscle and difficulty in feeding because of progressive dyspnea and fatigue it is again indicating that the muscle weakness there and the liver enlargement so saying hepatomegaly is present and the rails that are heard over both the lung fields indicating that there is kind of pulmonary edema and type of signs and symptoms here and also cardiomegaly. So, looking into overall uh, signs and symptoms that are given here in the uh, in this particular case. So, deficiency of which of the following enzymes is most likely responsible for this patient's symptoms. So, going with the first choice, first choice says it is uh, glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme. So, glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme, so it is present in the liver and to certain extent it is present in the kidney. So deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase, so it's going to lead to what is called as a Van Gogh's disease. In Van Gogh's disease, basically the signs and symptoms, uh, one of the commonest signs that, that you are going to see in Van Gogh's disease is hypoglycemia in fasting condition. Because glucose 6-phosphatase will be deficient in Van Gogh's disease, so glucose 6-phosphate accumulates because glucose 6-phosphatase generally, it breaks glucose 6-phosphate into glucose. So when there is glucose 6-phosphatase deficient, so glucose 6-phosphate, it won't be converted into glucose. So hence, glucose 6-phosphate will accumulate in the bloodstream. So, this glucose 6-phosphate has got alternative uh, metabolic events. So, one of the alternative pathway for glucose 6-phosphate is it can get into glycolysis as well. So, glucose 6-phosphate converted to pyruvate and pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA can be getting into fatty acid synthesis. And also note that glucose 6-phosphate can get into pentose phosphate pathway and thereby it will produce enough quantities of NADPH and also ribose 5-phosphate. When high concentration of NADPH is coming from pentose phosphate pathway because there is sufficient glucose 6-phosphate that is present, so NADPH is getting into fatty acid synthesis. So on one side acetyl coas are coming from glycolysis which are substrate for fatty acid synthesis and the requirement for fatty acid synthesis NADPH it is also coming from glucose 6-phosphate getting into pentose phosphate pathway. So because of this, so in glucose 6-phosphatase enzyme deficiency, so there will be hyperlipidemia and also because there will be high concentration of ribose 5-phosphate which is coming from pentose phosphate pathway. So this ribose 5-phosphate gets into purine and pyrimidine synthesis and purines which are synthesized in excess quantities so they will get into catabolic pathway so there will be and catabolic uh, product of purine uh, pathway is the uric acid that's why there will be increased concentration of uric acid in Van Gogh's disease and because there will be excess acetyl coas that are formed here so acetyl coas can get into ketone body formation so in Van Gogh's disease generally you are going to see hypoglycemia hyperlipidemia lactic acidosis, increased uric acid and hyperlipidemia. Coming into organ enlargement, in Van Gogh's disease you are going to see increased uh, liver size that is hepatomegaly and you may see renomegaly but generally we don't see cardiomegaly there in the Van Gogh's disease. That's why glucose 6-phosphate taze enzyme deficiency is not a correct answer here. 
Now next is the glycogen branching enzyme deficiency. In glycogen branching enzyme deficiency, the disease disorder in glycogen branching enzyme is the Anderson's disease. In Anderson's disease, generally the uh, glycogen that is accumulated will be showing a characteristic feature that is because branching enzyme will be deficient, so there will be very few branches in the glycogen that, it, that will be accumulated in the tissues. So that type of features are not mentioned here in the case time. So that's why glycogen branching enzyme deficiency is ruled out. Now lysosomal alpha-1,4 glucosidase. This alpha-1,4 glucosidase in lysosome, it is, al it is also called as acid maltase enzyme. And this is an enzyme which is responsible for degrading glycogen in lysosome. Note that the glycogen, the some part of some amount of glycogen, normally it will be degraded in the lysosomes by two enzymes that is alpha 1,4 glucosidase and alpha 1,6 glucosidase. Both enzymes are referred commonly as acid maltase. So here alpha 1,4 glucosidase is mentioned. Now when there is a deficiency of this alpha 1,4 glucosidase or acid maltase enzyme so the glycogen is not degraded in the lysosomes because of this there will be accumulation of glycogen in the lysosomes of all the tissues so that's why because of accumulation of glycogen in the lysosome of all these tissues so it will lead to signs and symptoms related to most of the organs so if the glycogen is accumulated in the muscle so the lysosome will be enlarged which will be replacing the cytoplasm and that will affect the normal muscular function. So that will lead to hypotonia. The tone of the muscle will be decreased and that's why you are seeing severe hypotonia in this particular baby and because the most of this muscle mus musculature will be affected so muscle of the um, mastications and the muscles present in the Eusophagus will also be affected even it, in, it, it involves diaphragm. So because of this there will be difficulty free, uh, in feeding because of progressive dyspnea and fatigue. So and also glycogen will be accumulated in the liver. So there will be there is a hepatomegaly here. So there could be any other organ, organomegalies in uh, lysosomal alpha-1 for glucosidase enzyme deficiency. So the glycogen as well it will be accumulated in the cardiac tissue that's why there will be cardiomegaly in lysosomal alpha 14 glucosidase deficiency so that's what you, uh, and one of the sign that is mentioned in this particular case stem is the cardiomegaly and because of the cardiomegaly so the uh, heart is not pumping properly and that's why it may secondarily lead to pulmonary uh, edema so that's why uh, the auscultation finding here that is the rails are heard on the auscultation of both the lower lung, lung fields. So generally so because of the hypotonia so babies will be they will be head, uh, head lag in the babies so that's usually babies are referred as floppy baby here. So Pompe, so basically this is a case of Pompe syndrome. So Pompe syndrome or a Pompe disease is because of deficiency of lysosomal alpha 14 glucosidase which is also referred as acid maltase enzyme so this particular choice appears to be correct for a moment here so we'll tick mark it as correct now now the next choice is lysosomal sphingomyelinase note that the deficiency of sphingomyelinase in lysosome will lead to neiman pick disease and neiman pick disease will be showing neurological signs and symptoms there will be cherry red macula and also the uh, the characteristic cells that you are going to see in the tissue biopsy are referred as foam cells. So that type of information is not mentioned here. That's why this is not a correct option. Now the fifth uh, option is my myophosphorylase enzyme. This myophosphorylase enzyme deficiency, note that myophosphorylase enzyme is also called as gly muscle glycogen phosphorylase. And this muscle glycogen phosphorylase is, is responsible for degradation of glycogen in the muscle. Glycogen is converted to, it is broken down, the glucose units present in the glycogen is released as glucose on phosphate by this mu muscle uh, glycogen phosphorylase which is commonly called, uh, called as myophosphorylase enzyme. So deficiency of this myophosphorylase will lead to what is called as 
Macadal's disease. In Macadal's disease, generally there will be exercise intolerance, there will be myoglobinuria after activity and there will be little or no lactate produced after activity. So that type of signs and symptoms are not mentioned here. So exercise, exercise intolerance and other signs and symptoms not mentioned and because of that so we can rule out myophosphorylase here. So overall the answer for this particular case stem is lysosomal alpha-1,4 glucosidase which is indicating it's a Pompe disease. Thank you.